Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, episode 2 of my hard mode SnowRunner playthrough. Um, I've got the two trucks in the garage in episode 1. We started hard mode, talked a little bit about why. It's a bit, it's a bit more of a talking head one. Um, I also realised that I did the aspect ratio wrong on it, so the previous one is a bit more letterbox. Episode 1 is letterbox because my monitor is a... Uh, um, the 3440 by 1440 monitor so I've changed that to record at the proper same aspect ratio as 1080p so hopefully it'll look a bit better on YouTube and the last letterbox apologies for that if I annoyed anybody um so in episode one we talked a little bit not a lot about why hard mode why this why I'm restarting this save now and then we went out did a little bit of exploration Grab some fuel from the fuel tanker up here because it's free. Didn't want to pay for it. Came down through the farm, found this watchtower, and then drove back. Grabbed an upgrade, went back, parked in the garage, and that was episode one finished. Um, we have a task to pick up an oil tanker, but at the moment we don't have a truck capable of. Well, I'm not confident that we have a truck capable of getting up there. We don't. We only have highway tires on the only big truck that we've got, and highway tires don't cut it in this game. But that uh, I, that that's a swampy area. Um, it even tells you on the mission that it's a swamp, stuck in a swamp, and we're not going there with the trucks that we've got. Um, so I think the next thing to do today is again in the Scout Chevy, come out check out. Uh, come out, drive down the road, come down, try to get this watchtower, and then head over towards the bottom of the map and into town. Because we're going to try and earn a bit of money doing tasks that don't require massive amounts of off road just yet. Because we haven't, because we need to get some XP, we need to get some money, and we need to open up more of the map. And I'm not sure in hard mode, because it didn't do the tutorial, whether or not the bridge that you rebuild as part of the tutorial is already there. So let's get in our Chevy, which we didn't unlock any extra upgrades for. No, we haven't got raised. We haven't got better tires because we didn't level up yet. We're currently on the all-terrain AS2s because they have a decent mud rating. Um, and I think mud is the most dangerous part of this map for me at the moment. So let's leave the garage. We've got 63 litres. We're not going to go and refuel right away. We'll head into town or we'll try to get to town if the bridge is available. Um, there's a trailer there with some metal beams on. If we find a mission that needs metal beams, we can use that. Uh, we've got the repair truck there. We don't need at the moment for this one. Came at the wrong exit, so my waypoint is wrong. Let's just fix that. There we go. So yeah, we're going to come across, and if, if we feel it's safe to, we'll go and try and get that watchtower. These these mud tires might be okay for it. I'd rather have raised suspension, off-road gearbox, better tires, etc. But that's the that's the nature of why I'm doing this hard mode challenge. It's the it's not really for the permadeath side of it. That just adds a bit of tension. Really, the the reason I'm doing hard mode is that I want the surprise that count as dangerous high war. It's just not much more than up to the top of your tires. But anyway, uh, yeah, I want vehicle progression. I want difficulty progression, and I've found. The, yes, it's good to learn the basics of the game, but the career or count, I keep calling it career mode, I guess campaign mode makes more, is more accurate. But the campaign mode um, doesn't. There's, the, the only progression in, in campaign mode is your skill level to unlock things. Whereas in hard mode, because you don't get a garage full of incredibly cool end game trucks for free on the DLCs you have to find trucks you have to 
balance what you use each truck for based on its strengths and weaknesses. You can't just have a specialist truck for everything. Um, and yeah, you have to find your trucks in the wild or save up enough to buy the ones that are available in the truck store. And I'm a good long way away from being able to do that yet. Got to earn a lot of money before we can do. We can consider that. So what's in here? Is there any tasks in this little yard? That looks like a task. Oh, I forgot that as well. That's a handbrake on, engine off. Look at the task. Placing the mountains not far away. Stunning views. So somebody's going to give me. Somebody's going to give me sixty experience, but more importantly, over a thousand dollars to go and look at a view that they say is cool. Don't mind people doing that in the real world. So that's that's a decent amount of money. That um, that's about three tanks of fuel for this little truck, and I think that's sort of. Um, math that we need to be doing is for a given task how much will it cost me to do it versus how much the reward is risk reward so that fuel carrier don't know if that's needed for a quest but again I'm going to take some fuel from that and fill the truck fill the Chevy up before we move any further and then we're going to see if that watchtower is reachable but that task to go and have a view up in the mountains, it's not it's a bit further on than where we went for the watchtower yesterday. So we could have been a bit more efficient if I'd remembered or known about this, grab that task first and then done it all in one trip into the hills. A little bit more of a gnarly drive up through the rocks, but I'm sure this scout is good enough to do that already, so let's get some waypoints. There is a route here looks like it would go to the watchtower but i'm going to stick to the road for a minute i don't want to go too far up east before we drive to get out of it just you know that without four by four i i was just uh all wheel drive i was stuck in that little bit of mud in the yard right what's this then? Where? That's another trailer. Let's just tag what that is because that might be useful to us for something else. Concrete blocks. Yeah, I think that's four concrete blocks. That's handy. Need them for something. But so uh, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to assume that everybody's watched episode one. In hard mode, you can't sell trailers. So whereas in campaign mode, that that trailer, you find it, it's got um, goods on it. You can use the goods f to complete tasks. And then when the trailer's empty, if you don't have a use for it, you can sell it and make a decent little bit of money. In in hard mode, you don't get money for selling trailers. So when that trailer's empty. Um, you just leave it parked somewhere until maybe you'll need it at some point in the future but it's an interesting one because if it's no use to you you might as well delete it you know? right. where am I in relation to the watchtower I do drive past things quite often ok so this this is going to be a gnarly little muddy bit. Let's see if we can... I, I think it's worth trying to get into that watchtower. Because we may be... If we don't do it, we may be missing upgrades. We may be missing task givers. So I think we need to try and get down this road and into there. And more importantly... <laughs> or as importantly... Out again. So this is this is where, where I say about the the tension from the, the hard mode permadeath thing is that... I could get this truck stuck, and at the moment I definitely do not have another one that could come and rescue it. Generally try to avoid... Oh, I haven't got a snorkel. Yeah, that's not going to be fun. 
Didn't think about that. Attach up a side, put it in a low ratio. Is this stuck already? Pull that over. Right. Not good, not good, stuck already. <laughs> Great start. So, discretion being the better part of valor. Reverse. Because we'll need to try and stay, if we're going to do this, we're going to try and need to stay near logs that we can use to pull ourselves. Try that route. Try going to the left. See if there's more logs. Low ratio. Engage that winch. I feel like this is a mistake. But at least there's plenty of logs on this side. Right, so far, oh. what could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> so far, so good. It feels like... The trouble is, I can't tell. That may be the type of swampy mud that you just sink up to your axles in. Right. Okay, so we tagged the watchtower. Engine off, handbrake on, cutscene. That's drowned scout truck, ball and power line. Let's look at what those. And I've turned um, engine off so that we don't burn any fuel while we're sat looking at the map to work out what we just unlocked. So there's a truck there. Drowned highway truck. That wants recovering. That may be doable. Depends what this road is like. There's a drowned scout truck by the farm. Then we also got Ball and power line. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, looks like the bridge. We just unlocked enough of the map to see. It looks like the bridge gets auto completed if you do hard mode. So it makes sense, I suppose, because the bridge repair is part of the tutorial in campaign mode. Okay, so we're certainly not going to push on with this truck to try and recover that highway truck. We want something a bit bigger to pull that out. And I'll want to scout this road and see if this is any worse than what we've just driven through. Or do we try to go there and then out that way? I don't know whether that yellow coloured road is better than what we just drove through or not. I suppose I can see from here. 
<laughs> that doesn't look like a road at all, does it? Now, I think we try and back out the same way we came in. So turn it around. camera went a bit weird then, I don't know why I did that. Uh, probably because it clipped through the watch power. Yeah, put it in cab view. Right, so we stick to the right and try and more or less follow the wheel tracks that we came in on, because at least there's enough fallen logs to hopefully winch if we did get stuck. See the check. Yeah, it's checking out. Check out a winch just to speed up our progress. Fallen power lines, that's one of our main roads um, from town up to the garage and onto the other parts of the map, so we'll do that fallen power line. Watching. Winch is invaluable for this game. For all vehicles, not just for scouts. Makes such a big difference to your maneuverability. And I didn't, when I was playing campaign mode, I didn't initially get that quick winching without having to stop and go into the function menu was a thing. So now that I know about that, I've got that bound to two buttons on my mouse. That's what it says. Mouse button apply, pull winch. Mouse button pull to release the winch. Makes it really convenient when I'm trying to drive. To not have to worry about the keyboard, I can just carry on. Because I'm driving mouse and keyboard, I have got a Logitech G29 steering wheel. But I don't find it very... I find it a bit buggy in this game, or I find this game a bit buggy with that steering wheel. It's... It's like a user interface problem, it seems to conflict, it never seems to know whether it's supposed to be using the PlayStation D-pad on the Logitech steering wheel, or the mouse and keyboard, and in some modes it's just really hard to control. So I just tend to drive mouse and keyboard to be honest. I might get an Xbox controller at some point, but no, I, don't, I don't mind using a mouse and keyboard. Right, so that little endeavour into the watchtower, bearing in mind we refuelled in the little farmyard just before going there, that little endeavour used 15 litres of fuel, which is quite a lot for this truck. So, yeah, as soon as you, as soon as you get, I think it's mainly because the progress is so slow, you're still burning lots of litres per minute. But you're hardly you're moving at a snail's pace. Let's turn this back to high range also. Um, yeah, as soon as you're in low range and your wheels are spinning in mud, you're burning the fuel and not making much progress. So therefore, that little bit of drive used up a relatively large amount of fuel. So, handbrake engine off. Just want to check something. So where it said, yeah, so it hasn't actually given us the task. It's just told us on the map, the task giver, the fallen power line is there. So it's, it's shown us where it is, but it hasn't given us the task. So let's just drive up that road and get that task. So we know what materials we need to try and find and bring.
handbrake engine off and look at the task. Okay, so fifteen hundred dollars. XP at the moment is probably a secondary concern. The XP is important for unlocking different upgrades to your vehicle, but at the moment having enough money to not go bankrupt and ruin our save is a priority. And possibly yeah, get the snorkel on this truck so it's a bit less likely to get stuck in a puddle as well. Um, start tracking. What does it want? So it wants concrete blocks and metal beams. And if I remember rightly, let's get rid of these. We found concrete blocks. Yeah, it's the same icon. I don't remember the icons, but concrete blocks. That's the same icon. There's four on that trailer. We need two for this bridge. And then also in the garage, there was a flatbed with metal beams on. I'm assuming that we're going to pay to unload those though, because we haven't got a crane on any of our vehicles yet. Right, so we actually need the other truck now, but I don't like just leaving the scouts out here. So let's think about what we want to do next with the scout. That road's blocked. Take it back to town and do some watchtowers in town. Uh, no, I think what we'll do is we'll bring it and park it here. Because then we can go up into the mountains and do the sightseeing thing at some point using this truck. Okay, so turn around. Beautiful lighting. The world in this game just... Um, just the yeah, that's the, the the quality of the of the lighting, quality of the terrain, the models. Yeah, this this is just such a beautiful beautiful game. We do not need all wheel drive. I don't know why I'm driving all wheel drive there. We we'll save a bit of fuel on this tarmac. a nice bridge up there that's already done but we're not going that way just yet I think we're going to park our truck up and then bring the fleet star we'll drive here bearing in mind the fleet star's got highway tyres so this this particular bit slightly worrying this particular bit is a bit muddy. We'll have to drive a bit more, a bit carefully through there. I have got used to ish got used to driving on the right side of the road because it's an American map why not in the UK we drive on the other side of the road but given that uh, in the UK the driving steering wheel would be on the other side of the car it just makes sense in this game drive American but of course you never see any other vehicles I've only played solo mode I've not done caught and you never see any other vehicles and actually, the world, to me, it kind of feels more like a Fallout 4 type of um, post-apocalyptic. I know, I know the storyline is that there's been a flood, but blimey, this is one hell of a flood to have affected this amount of the world. Right, engine off, handbrake on, shift to the garage, jump in the garage, get our other truck. We, I know we installed the all-wheel drive option. We haven't got any other. We haven't leveled up, so we don't think. No, we haven't leveled up, so there will be 
no new tyre options. Oh, this hasn't got much fuel in it, mind. But there was some fuel in one of these sides. So I think we'll grab the beams trailer here, pull it along to here, and then we'll get some fuel from that fuel carrier. And maybe even pull that fuel carrier out and at some point take it back to the garage. So they've got a convenient refueling point at the garage. <coughs> yeah, but we've only got 37 litres of fuel. So, but, so this is a sort of consideration for hard mode. Lights on. We've only got 37 litres of fuel. So there is a risk that we'll run out of fuel before getting to that fuel tank. I doubt it, but it's possible. This burns a lot more fuel than the other truck does. Um, but we can always use the Chevy to bring fuel to this if we had to. Providing we don't put this in a place that the Chevy can't reach. Attach the trailer. So we're taking this to the fallen power line. But in the, on the way, we're going to stop off and get some fuel at the fuel tanker. I love the sound of this engine. These big, throaty American engines sound beautiful. love it. Some of the engines, there's a couple of trucks that I played in my other save that I literally rejected that truck as part of my fleet because the engine noise was, was meh. But this big old throaty, I don't know what sort of engine it is, V8, V10, sounds like a V8 I suppose. Right, all wheel drive. Not using a dip lock yet, but I could. Let's just compare it. I'll put the dip lock on. Yeah, you got a dip lock. You've got to put in low range in the crawler gearbox, low range gearbox, and I think progress is even slower then. So if you use ten liters of fuel just getting here from the garage. It's mad. Because we're burning 8 litres a minute through this mud. So we may end up using the Chevy. If I drop the trailer here 23 litres would I'm sure would get me to that fuel tank. It's the dragging the weight of that trailer but it'll be interesting. Adds that bit of tension. Are we going to make it? 21 litres left. Eighteen liters and sixty two sixty meters to go. Getting out of the wheel ruts that I find helps because the wheel ruts are are more muddy. Driving like I am, you're creating new real wheel ruts, but the map resets them after a while. Whereas the ones that are based into we're nearly there. 13 litres. Can we do it? Get onto this bit of asphalt. And then I'll drop the trailer and just get fuel and then come back and get the trailer. Because I'm not reversing this trailer out. Um, right, so. Detach the trailer there. 
and then go and fill it with fuel from that tank in the corner. And they made it with nine litres to spare. And we've used about 250 litres from that tank's original capacity. But now this fleet's there is full for it's for the first time since we got it. Back her up to that trailer. Yeah, to re the trailers, reversing trailers with those dolly wheels, it's not something I can... I've done a fair bit of reversing trailers in real life, but not with dolly wheels, and I don't think I'm ever going to get the hang of doing that in a game. It's too weird. Maybe in the real world, if you can look over your shoulder and see things and get a bit of a feel for the movement of the vehicles, maybe. But in the game, where you haven't got very good visibility over your shoulders, you much forget it. Um, and then, this is a good example of what I was saying earlier. This trailer, once I've used this trailer to get these beams, is it useful to me to keep? I don't know. Doubt it. Right, got to go through another muddy bit, but at least we got a full tank of fuel for it. I know I should have turned the all-wheel drive off when I was on that little bit of ash belt road. I may as well use a winch to help me. get some off road tires for this. These highway tires just useless. Pulled that right out from its roots. So this is uh, full dark. What time is it now? So it's nine nine thirty p.m. Full dark with from a cab view perspective. Obviously, quite a lot of the screen is black now because it's the cab's interior. So there's a little portal of window to see the road ahead of me. I don't know how well this will translate into a YouTube scenario. Maybe I could turn the brightness up, but at the moment I'm not messing with any of that stuff. This is just as the game is played. Um, if I were to put it into third person, arguably there's a bit of, vis bit of better visibility of what's going on, maybe. But I, don't know, I just prefer a cab view. Right, so this is going to be, so what I'm interested in here, this is the first task that we've done. Uh, let me put it on handbrake neutral a sec, handbrake gearbox off, engine off. I want to see this task. So this is going to pay 1550. And I've currently got... So I, it's not going to pay it now because I've got a hand in the second step. So I've got 73.50. What I'm going to... What I'm interested in is whether... With the hard mode thing about loading and unloading... Does that include... 
It's got it, right. So I'm expecting this. We've got 73.50 cargo. Let's back it up into the boat a bit too far. Engine off. So cargo out options. Oh, that's showing the task. Cargo, man cargo management. So I'm expecting this to ask me if I want to pay to unload it. So it didn't. It's removed it from the trailer. No cargo to unload. And my money is still 73.50. Interesting. Right, I'm not going to try and back this out. I think what I'll do is I will detach this trailer here and then I'll move the truck and then I'll pull these trailers probably because I'm going to have to get the other trailer for the other cargo. I'll just pull them forwards up the hill, maybe drop them in the farm until I decide whether I need them for another. Oh, damage. Done my first bit of damage to my engine. Drove into the pillar. Bad. Bad, aren't they? So let's go and get the other trainer real quick. Which was on the map. The other trailer is here. And this has got four concrete blocks on it, but we only need. Yeah. We only need two. The first person is my prefer preference for driving, but it doesn't really show much of what's going on around me in terms of other people watching me driving. I think third person in comparison is probably a more interesting view for, for, for anybody watching. don't know. Not fishing for comments, but if anybody's got any opinions, share <laughs> a little bit I, I don't expect anybody even watch uh, maybe, maybe maybe some people will find it interesting I know some family members will watch it just to make them feel better oh two more engine damage yeah, that's the other thing it's just got to be careful of damaging vehicles by driving like you stole it would, in the real world would you have driven that fast I don't know Okay, so this is a bigger, heavier trailer. Let's hope that we don't have any issues again. Because uh, let's hope we don't have any issues pulling it through some of the muddy bits. Everybody's tucked up in their nice little trailers. Probably. Playing games on their Xboxes, all these all these trailers lit up. They're probably playing SnowRunner on their Xboxes, sat in there, wondering what all the noise is outside. But again, hard mode. I can't skip time. I can't skip the daylight. It doesn't let you. Hard mode. You have to play through the day-night cycle in. I put that in low, and I'm gonna dip lock it to get out of here because it's a very heavy trailer. Um. I'm also going to attach the winch. Yeah, when it finds a winch point. Very heavy trailer, two more concrete blocks than I need, but I'll park this one up. I'll take the two off that are needed for this mission and then park the trailer up somewhere convenient to get to, probably up near the garage. Uh, garage, I mean fuel stop. In the UK we tend to refer to a garage as being a fuel stop. Whereas uh, whereas here, the, the in-game garage where you do your vehicles, I would call a workshop rather than a garage. So my vocabulary is going to slip up on that quite often. The fuel stop is, is what I meant. I'll drop this up near the fuel stop. 
with two remaining concrete blocks. Put it back in high ratio. Back on down this bit of asphalt. Turn off all wheel drive because I shouldn't need it on this piece of road. So all wheel drive, definitely need it there. And low, just because auto gearbox, the biggest thing about the auto gearbox, not yet having the off road gearbox, it gives me high and low ratio you know, within the low range, is that you don't want to be doing gear changes if you're trying to traverse mud because you lose all your momentum. <laughs> I don't know why that did that. I'm just trying to attach the middle of my truck to the telegraph pole because it's pulling at a better angle than if I was on the nose of my truck. And it'll help me get past the telegraph pole rather than pulling me to the telegraph pole. If that makes sense. And then disengage. Auto winch always just goes off the nose, but there's quite often more can more appropriate places to connect your winch than straight on the front of the truck. Some sometimes connect the winch to the trailer and have the trailer pulled forward because it takes all of the pressure off the tractor unit. Let's see if I've got enough range to do that and demonstrate that. So the front left of the trailer to that telegraph pole and then if I winch and drive now effectively the winch on the trailer is helping the tractor unit get forward and that made the winch more useful than if I'd have just attached it to the truck. It's a little bit um, non-immersive though because in again in the real world your winch is attached to your nose of your truck and that's the end of it so this this idea that you can attach a winch between the trailer and the and a point in the environment would only work if the trailer had winches several winches so it's a little bit unrealistic but makes it more convenient in the game I think hard mode is given enough challenge. This feels like you know, we're coming to the end of episode two quite soon, and very slow progress. I'm I'm slow at playing these games anyway. I'm not as fast as some people might be, but um, yeah, not a lot of progress for two episodes. So I might again start thinking about do I do I do stuff off camera to make progress? Do I do time lapses? Do I explain what I'm doing and then just do a little cut to skip out something that's boring, like crawling along at three miles an hour through some mud? Right, turn the diff lock off. Put this into normal ratio. Probably I'm fully on tarmac now, so turn off all wheel drive. Should be solid road all the way now uh, yeah so I've got to decide and feedback well put, welcome I've got to decide whether to literally show everything that happens while I'm playing like I have done so far for the first two episodes or whether to start doing editing to tidy the content then. Engine off, handbrake on. Again, my current cash is 73.50. The task is meant to give me 15.50. So let's see what happens if I unload these two. 
Twenty five bucks. Yeah, that didn't that didn't charge me for unloading. So maybe the uh, the loading and unloading hard mode thing is only if you're doing it to load a truck from like a warehouse. Hmm. Right. Uh, I am gonna continue up this road now with this trailer on the back. Going into first person. It's got two concrete blocks and I'm gonna drop it off at the fuel stop. Somewhere somewhere convenient on the fuel stop that as and when I need two more concrete blocks, I can come here to collect them and get here by a paved road. I don't remember what other tasks require those concrete blocks. Oops, sorry, speed limit sign. Got a little bit of a wobble coming through that corner. Um, yeah, I don't remember what these blocks might be useful for, but I'm sure there'll be something. drive. Bit of winch assist. Okay. Diff lock. Diff lock and crawler gear. But I am, regardless of whether I've got all wheel drive and diff lock, I'm still driving up a muddy track with a fair bit of weight still on a trailer. On highway tyres. And highway tyres are useless. Not a fan of how Leave the engine on. I meant to winch, not to an inch. Yeah. Don't think that's a very big tree to put a truck like this. I don't think so. Is there anything more substantial? Maybe if I do rear the trailer to that telegraph pole. Highway tires gotta go. I'm not. I, I. I literally can't venture too far because my tires are limited. Side of the truck to that telegraph pole. Tarmac is just ahead. Just got to get a little bit further. So we did this mission. That we started off with more or less full fuel because we topped up. We've done that task and earned uh, 1550 let's just I finished it yet I said I've finished it Made a little bit preemptive of me get us up onto these onto the tarmac and these highway tires should start working now. So we aren't we are at fifteen hundred and fifty dollars for doing the task. We've done a little bit of damage to the truck, but hopefully 
not much. Not too expensive at least. I'm going to park these, this trailer here. Just leave it there. And then I'm going to put this in and see how much it would cost to refuel. Because that gives us a profit margin then, doesn't it? So if I wanted to fuel up here, it would cost me $294. So you got to take 300 off the 1550. So 1250. And and that's that's the kind of math we're going to need to be doing every time we do this. Is how much fuel does it cost to do the job versus how much do I earn for the job? Okay. I think we're going to leave this episode here. That's probably a little bit longer than I would have liked to make an episode. But again, I'm not doing any edi editing at the moment. So this is more or less going to go up raw. And we'll see in the next couple of episodes whether or not I want to do anything to reduce the duration of a video. But get more progress done in the, in the same time from a viewer's perspective. But just get some stuff done off camera. I love the way when you turn the engine off, the guy goes to sleep, the driver. But it's just me. Uh, okay. Thank you, everybody. If you've watched this, much appreciated. Um, see you in the next one.